Hey everyone, Ricardo here, and in this video I'm going to be showing you how directional control elements work in SEL protective relays using the SEL 351S relay as an example. So what we mean by directional control is having a way to determine the direction of a fault and then supervising or torque controlling our protective elements such that they trip only in the direction we want them to. So for example, let's say that you're using a ground over current element for the protection of a network transmission line and you only want this element to trip in the direction of the transmission line and not the substation behind the relay. What you would do is you would set up a directional control element that looks for faults in the direction of the transmission line and then use this element to torque control the ground over current element so that it is only enabled when the relay detects a fault in the direction of the transmission line. And so by doing this, we can make our protection elements more selective such that they only trip for faults in the locations we want them to. Now, before we go deeper into how to set up a directional control element using the SCL351S relay, make sure to subscribe to the channel. We always post videos here about power engineering and power system protection and control. And if you wanna learn more about power system protection and control, check out our online courses on our website where we go into these topics in a lot more detail. I'll leave a link to those courses in the description below. All right, so let's take a look at how we can set up a directional control element using the SCL351S relay. So for example, let's say that we have a transmission system that looks like this, where we have two parallel transmission lines and we are developing the settings for the SCL351S relay on the top left breaker. And in this example, we want to configure the SCL351S such that it has a ground inverse time over current element that trips for faults in the direction of the transmission line and does not operate for faults in the opposite direction. In other words, if there's a fault at T sub one, this substation over here on the left, we don't want the relay to trip. Now, if the fault is on the transmission line, so on this transmission line over here, we do want the relay to trip. So what we could do in this case is to set up a ground inverse time over current element that is torque controlled with a directional element that looks for faults in the direction of the transmission line. So again, let's say that we have a fault in the transmission line. So I'm gonna put a ground fault over here on the transmission line. And what we want is this right here where we see that this breaker over here trips. And again, that's because the fault that I have placed is forward as it relates to this relay. So it's in the direction of the transmission line. Now, if instead I put the same fault at the substation bus behind the relay, so over here, what we want is this where nothing trips. So our overcurrent element is set up such that it trips for faults in the transmission line, but not for faults in the substation bus. So this is what we mean by making the element directional. Now, what we consider forward or reverse depends on how the CT is wired. So let me actually go to the instruction manual of the SCL351S relay. And that is this instruction manual that I have over here. And if I go to page 61, you can see over here that I have a typical wiring of the CTs for the SCL351S relay, where the polarity of the CTs is such that the relay is quote unquote looking into the feeder. So in other words, if you notice the CT over here and notice where the polarity marks are, you can see that if current flows down from here, so into the feeder, which in our case would be the transmission line, current flows into the polarity of the CT, it's going to flow out of the polarity of the CT and into the polarity mark of the relay terminals. That's important because that's what the relay is going to interpret as a forward fault, which again, in our case, is false in the direction of the transmission line. In this wiring over here, it's on the direction of the feeder down here. Now, as I mentioned before, the way to achieve this directionality that we want is by setting up our inverse time over current element and then torque controlling that element such that it is only active when the relay detects a fault in the forward direction. So let's actually go to page 109 and let me zoom in a little bit more. And basically in here, we have the internal logic for the relay for the inverse time ground over current element level one. So this element over here, 51 G1T, is what we would use for our trip and relay warbit. Now you can see here that the entire logic gets cut off by this torque control switch that we have over here. Basically, the comparison between the ground current and the pickup of the ground over current element is not even performed if this switch is open. So what we want over here is for this part of the logic to be a logical one such that we close the switch and then we perform the calculation for the ground over current element. And if this part of the logic is a logical zero, that means that this switch is going to be open. So we cut off the entire logic for this ground over current element. Now notice over here that the input to the switch comes from this AND gate over here, which in turn comes from this torque control setting as well as the directional built-in logic in the SCL351S relay. 
And I just want to point that out because the SCL351 is really has the directionality function built in to the logic of the overcurrent elements. Whereas some other relays don't have that and you actually have to include the directional warp bit in the torque control equation. Now again, for the case of the SCL351S relay, which is what we're looking at in this example, that directionality is done internally via this portion of the logic right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to set the torque control to a logical one to force this part of the AND gate to always be a logical one. And then we're solely going to rely on the directionality for whether or not we perform the ground over current calculation. Again, just pointing that out because some relays do this differently. So make sure to look at the instruction manual for the specific relay you're using. Now in our case, again, we're gonna set this to a logical one. And then whether or not this part of the logic becomes a logical one depends on a couple of settings that we're gonna look at here in a second. Some of them are the E32 and the DIR1 setting. And notice that in here that we have a note saying that this part of the logic comes from one. One says it's from figure 4.22. So basically, if we wanna see what this part of the logic is, we have to go to this other figure where the relay shows us the internal logic for that part of the logic. So that figure is actually on page 201. And again, it's figure 4.22. And by the way, those figure numbers are dependent on the version of the instruction manual that you have. So the figures that I'm mentioning here might not apply to the specific version that you're using. I'm using the version from the instruction manual from August 31st of 2023. So this is the other part of the logic that again feeds into the other figure that we were just looking at. And what we can see here is that if we set our setting DIR1, that is the directional setting for level one elements, this one over here, and here, if we set that to F, meaning forward, and the relay detects a fault in the forward direction by asserting this relay warp bit over here, 32 GF, this will enable our ground inverse time over kernel element, and it will therefore be active during forward faults only, which again, in our case, is in the direction of the transmission line we looked at previously. Now, when the relay asserts this relay warp bit, 32 GF, depends on a few settings. So let's see how we can program that in the settings file. All right, so what I have over here are default settings for an SCL351S relay. And in here, I will only focus on the directional elements. Of course, if you are using a settings file for a real life application, you will look at many other settings, including other protection elements, the different outputs, different alarms that you want. But in here, I'm just gonna go over the directional settings and the ground over current element. So we can see how we can set up a directional inverse time ground over current element. So the first thing that I wanna do is go over here to group one and set one and line settings and fault locator. And in here, you wanna make sure that you set these settings as needed for your specific case. These are the line positive and zero sequence impedances, and there really needs this information for doing the directional calculation. So it's important that in our case, for example, that we're using this in a transmission line example, that we get the data for the transmission line and enter that information over here. This is very important because this is what the relay uses for doing the directional calculation. Now I'm just gonna leave these at default again, these depend on your specific case. So just make sure you enter the numbers for your specific transmission line here. The other thing that I wanna do, of course, is to enable the residual ground over current element and actually want the inverse time over current element. So I go over here to residual ground time over current element. And in here, I'm gonna enable just one element and you would go here and set these settings based on your specific application and whatever coordination study you have done. Again, these are specific to your application and they are dependent on what's around your transmission line and your coordination. So I'm just gonna leave them at default, but for your example, you would go ahead and set the pickup, the curve of time dial, such that it coordinates with protection at the remote substation. Now remember, by setting this, this only enables the element and determines its stripping characteristic, but we haven't made this directional yet. And so to actually make this directional, we would go over here to directional elements and in here we have several settings. The first thing that we need to do is to enable directional control. You have two options for enabling the directional control. If you set this to no, of course, that just disables it. You have an option to set this to Y, meaning yes. And what this does is it actually enables the directional element and lets you manually enter information, or you can set this to auto and the relay is gonna auto calculate some of the settings based on the information that we entered in the line settings portion of the settings file. So again, when I said before that those settings are very important, that's because when we set this to auto, the relay auto calculates the directional elements based on that information. So again, I'm gonna set this to auto, the relay is gonna take some information over here from the line settings and full locator section, and it's gonna configure the directional elements 
based on that information. Now we also have another setting over here, which is called the loss of potential ELOP. And what this setting does is it determines what they really does when there is a loss of potential condition. In other words, when the relay loses voltage measurements because of a problem with the PT circuit, which of course we need for the directional calculations. Now, if you set this to Y, even though the overcurrent elements are set to be forward directional, if there is a loss of potential condition, the relay effectively is going to make the directional elements non-directional. And this is done in order to provide protection during a loss of potential condition. So in other words, even though we're making the elements directional, because we need voltage for the directional calculation, we can say, okay, if you lose voltage, meaning you're not able to calculate directionality anymore, therefore you're not gonna declare a forward direction. Go ahead and make the elements non-directional because I still want some protection even if I lose voltage. So it's basically just a backup saying, I want my elements to be directional, but if you're not able to determine directionality, at least keep them enabled and make them non-directional. And again, that's done just so you have at least some protection even when you lose potentials. Now I'm gonna set this to Y for this example, but note here that there is no right or wrong answer. Basically what you set this to depends on how you want your directional elements to behave when there is a loss of potential condition. Now then we have this setting DIR1, and I'm gonna set this to forward. What this does is it tells the relay which direction to make the level one over current elements. And of course, for this example, I'm saying forward, meaning in the direction of the transmission line. I could also set this reverse if I wanted to, such that they really trips only for faults in the substation bus in the reverse direction. Of course, again, here, I want this to be forward for my example. And then lastly, we have this setting down here, which is the order for the ground directional priority. And this setting basically determines the order of preference of the directional control algorithm. The really internally has different options for how it determines directionality. And I'm actually gonna set this to Q, which means they really will only use the negative sequence voltage polarized element. All right, so now we have set up the ground inverse time over current element. We've made it directional. The last thing that we need to do, of course, is to program our element into the trip equation so that it actually does the trip in action. And to do that, of course, we will go to the trip logic, which is under logic one, trip. And in here, we're gonna have just default settings from the SCL351S really. In this example, I've only programmed my ground inverse time over current element. So I will just set this to 51G1T. And again, this is the relay orbit for that element, which we've enabled over here. And we've made it directional by choosing these settings over here. So now we can just program that into the trip equation. And you would of course then program this trip logic into the output contact that hits the trip coil of the breaker. All right, so that's how you set up a directional control element using the SCL351S relay. If you wanna learn more about power system production and control, check out our online courses on our website where we go into these topics in a lot more detail. We have courses on bus differential protection, transformer differential protection, protective relay logic, and much more. And as always, make sure to like the video if you found it helpful and subscribe to the channel for more videos about power engineering and power system protection and control. And we'll see you in the next one.